most option traders are searching for the holy grail. The one strategy that can produce consistently good returns eliminate losses altogether. In this video, I'm going to talk through in detail the option wheel strategy. I'm going to show you how if used properly, it can greatly decrease the odds of you losing in your positions long term and how potentially on most positions, it can truly be a no loss proposition. First, I want to briefly address the no loss option trading strategy theory. That's one you've probably heard on YouTube and various social media platforms. Investments by their very nature have a level of risk. Certain investments are more risky than others. When you're doing an option trade, that also applies. Anytime you buy or sell an asset, it always involves some level of risk. Even a somewhat conservative strategy like the optional strategy, it too involves risk. But let me show you how you can minimize your risk of loss by using this optional strategy. Because I think you're gonna find that it's as close as possible as we can get to a no loss strategy. But please keep in the back of your mind that any strategy, any trading strategy, including the optional strategy, it can and will lose in certain situations. But if done properly, you can greatly decrease the odds of losing long-term. Before you begin trading in any strategy, it's important you clearly understand your risk. If you understand your risk, you can decide if the strategy is right for you. So let me explain the optional strategy. Let me show you multiple real life positions I've been in, some that went my way and some that went against me and sometimes in a really big way. So you can decide if the optional strategy is good for you. Briefly, let me show you exactly what the optional strategy is and I'm going to show you several real life examples I've been trading the optional strategy in. Here you see a daily chart of KR, the Kroger company. With the optional strategy, the first step is to sell cash to put options in a stock that you feel comfortable owning. For example, with KR trading for around $50 per share, if we felt comfortable buying it at $47 per share, we might consider selling the $47 cash care put option that expires in the next 20 to 50 days. If KR were to come down in price and be below $47 per share at expiration, then we would allow the stock to be assigned to us and we'd then turn it into a covered call by selling a covered call against the stock that we were just assigned. In that situation, since we bought it at $47 per share, ideally we'd like to be selling the $47 per share covered call. Then at the expiration of that $47 covered call you sold, if the stock is trading above $47 per share, you would then allow it to be called away from you so you'd be back at a net cash position. That's how the optional strategy works. Seems pretty simple, right? But there's more to it than that. But if you want to trade in a way that will minimize your losses and potentially eliminate losses on most of your positions, there's three important things you need to know about the optional strategy. The first piece of critical information is the strike prices you pick when you're selling your cash to put options. And it's not just picking a strike price, it's picking multiple strike prices. Let me show you what I mean. Here you see a trade I did in KR. It's the company I just showed you the chart. Notice here that I sold the February 16th $44 strike price cash care put options. Notice I did this trade on January 2nd. Now let's fast forward 24 hours to the next day. Notice on the next day, January 3rd, I'd sold some additional cash care put options in the Kroger company. But here you see that my strike price was different. I sold the February 16th $45 cash care put option strike prices. That's because the Kroger company had gone up in price and I felt comfortable selling that higher strike price put option. But now let's fast forward one more day. Let's go to January 4th and notice the strike price of the cash care put option I sold against Kroger on this day. Again, we were back at the $44 strike price cash care put option. Why was I selling different strike prices in these put options? It was because as the stock moved around, I wanted my strike prices to also move around with it. When the Kroger company appeared to be weak, I sold a lower strike price. When it appeared to be stronger, I sold a higher strike price. So one critical concept to keep in mind is that you don't have to sell the same strike price on all your cash care put options. In fact, I prefer to enter my position slowly as you see here. That way if the price of the stock you're selling put options against goes down, you have the ability to sell cash care put options at lower and lower strike prices. This concept is known as vertical diversification. It's a way of diversifying the price that you might be forced to buy the stock at. Now going back to our chart, let me show you what that would look like. Now I've gone back to the general days whenever we were selling these cash care put options against KR. Here you see the two white lines where the strike prices were the put options we sold. Remember we sold some at $45 per share and some down here at $44 per share. Now overall, from a technical standpoint, KR was looking pretty good. It broke out above the green 50 moving average and also the red 200 moving average on this daily chart. I do consider other charts, but for the sake of this example, let's just focus on this daily chart here. Notice that if KR had come down and challenged my $45 strike price, it's very possible I may have had to buy some of those shares at $45 per share. However, if it didn't go any lower, then those put options would expire worthless. But if it did come down and challenge my $44 cash care put option strike price, then I might be forced to buy additional shares at $44 per share. So if we bought half of them at 45 and the other half at 44, 
then our overall out-of-pocket cost will be $44.50 per share. You see, by selling different strike prices, it allows you to potentially buy the stock at a lower strike price than if I sold all of them at that initial $45 per share. It's a way of diversifying your possible entry points if the put options were eventually assigned to you. That concept of selling different strike price put options is known as vertical diversification. But you could also diversify another way. The other way would be known as horizontal diversification. For example, here you see all the expiration days we could choose from right now to sell put options against the Kroger company. We could choose one that's 17 days out, another one that's 45 days out. And as you see here, we can even go out a year and a half and sell some that expire in 563 days. But the key point here is to consider entering your position slowly. If you plan to sell more than one cash or put options against the stock, consider into that position slowly. That way if the stock drops, you're able to sell this cash care put options at lower and lower strike prices. Let me share with you a real life example so you can see exactly what I mean. Here you see my cash care put option and cover call position that I'm in right now with UPS. A while back, we were assigned some cash care put options in UPS. And as a result, if you see here under average price, we bought 100 shares at just under $165 per share. Well, UPS has kind of been all over the place since then. But average cost basis is right at $164.56 per share. But notice in this line here, in the pink highlight, we've been selling additional cash care put options against UPS. Notice where our strike price is. It's $145 per share. So although the 100 shares that we own, our cost basis is around $165 per share, if we were assigned this July 19th 145 put option, it would mean that our overall out-of-pocket cost was $155 per share. That vertical diversification allows you to potentially own stock at lower and lower prices. Here you see an Excel spreadsheet of my UPS position. This is a combined spreadsheet that shows all the premium as well as the cost of the shares that I currently own. This spreadsheet spans the past several years. Notice that as a result of selling covered calls and cash care put options at lower and lower strike prices, although we were assigned those UPS shares around $165 per share, our true out-of-pocket cost on those 100 shares is right now $54.89 per share. So if you're gonna use the will strategy, consider selling lower and lower strike price cash care put options, especially if a stock continues to decline. If you do that, you just want to make sure that you feel comfortable owning that stock at the strike prices of the cash care put options you're selling. One of the ways I do this is that I have specific rules when it comes to position sizing. When I enter a new position, the maximum I want to have at risk in any one position is around 2 to 3% of my overall portfolio. However, if a position goes against me, I then allow my maximum position size to be 5% of my overall portfolio. That leaves me 2 to 3% to repair a position or as you've seen here, to sell put options that strike prices below where I was initially assigned the stock at. The second critical concept you want to make sure you understand is the importance of selling options or doing the wheel strategy in proven companies. These are companies that have a long track record of successfully running their business and preferably growing their net income. You also make sure that they're not loaded down a bird with a bunch of debt, and especially that that debt is not growing over time in an unsustainable way. Now, I will admit, there's no perfect company out there, but there are some that are a lot better than others. Let me show you what I mean. Here you see some of the fundamental information on KR or the Kroger company that I showed you a trade in earlier. Here we're looking at its gross profit over time. Each one of these bars is one year. Notice the slope of this graph over time. On the far right, we have 2015. On the far left, we have 2014. Notice that overall, over time, the slope of this line is going up. That means its gross profit is increasing over time. I like that. And here we see the yearly net income graph. Again, notice the overall, even though there's some bumpiness and some choppiness in this graph, notice the overall we do see a fairly consistent and slightly increasing net income. That looks good to me. So if that's a good example, what does a bad example look like? Well, here you see some fundamental data of VSC or the VF Corporation. Let's first look at gross profit. Overall, gross profit looks pretty good. It's not really growing, but it's fairly consistent each year. But now let's scroll down to net income. What does net income of VFC look like? That doesn't look too good, does it? Although this is a company I have traded in the past, right now I'm not entering any new positions in VFC because as you can see, its net income just doesn't look very good. The important takeaway here is to pick solid, mature, consistently profitable, and growing companies to trade the option wheel strategy in. Over the long run, that'll help you be a lot more successful than if you trade companies that are struggling and having a hard time like VFC is right now. And if you wanna avoid the whole worry about growing earnings and consistently profitable and things like that, you might consider just trading in an overall broad-based ETF like SPY. Just know that you won't get as much premium for the covered calls and cash care put options that you're selling. But overall, if you didn't really wanna worry about the fundamentals, 
then trading in the ETF might be worth considering. Now let's talk through a third critical criteria you want to consider when trading the optional strategy, and that's a company's technical indicators. It's important to know the history of a stock's price and how it tends to respond to certain levels. For example, if you are buying a house, you like to buy a house in a neighborhood where prices generally continue to go up as compared to a neighborhood where prices are really all over the place. Some days are up 10%, the next days are down 10%. Well, it's the same way with stocks. If trading the optional strategy, you like to trade in companies that are around the bottom part of a range they typically trade in. That way it's more likely that a stock will go in your favor or go up. Let me show you how to do that. Here you see four charts of KR about the time that we entered those cash care put options I showed you at the beginning of this video. That was around the early part of January. As I zoom in here, notice what had recently happened to the daily chart of KR. It recently broke out above both the green 50 and red 200 moving average on this daily chart. That's generally a bullish sign. Now looking over here at the bottom right chart, the weekly chart, Notice that over the past several months, it had been finding support right around this red 200 moving average on this weekly chart. Well, that moving average corresponded to the level of right around $42.5 per share. That told me that if KR did come down, all that my $45 and $44 cash care put options would possibly be in the money, it most likely find support around that $42.5 price point. So I knew I had the technicals lined up in my favor. In addition to that, I also saw that KR was coming down and testing that area that had previously served as resistance for it. That resistance area was right here at this red 200 moving average. Notice that it found resistance right here towards the middle of December, again back in early December, then also back in November just to go back a few months. Remember that resistance, once broken through, tends to turn to support. So KR was approaching an area where I expected it to find support. One of the reasons why technical analysis works is kind of ironic. The reason is that a lot of people believe that it works because it does work. So it's important to have technical analysis in your favor when you're using the option wheel strategy. Another important technical factor you want to consider is the volatility of a stock. You've probably heard that it's better to trade options in more volatile stocks than in lesser volatile ones. But I'm here to present the other side of that argument. In black, you see the three-year chart of Kroger, the stock that I share with you now I've been trading in. In the orange line, you see the same three-year chart of Tesla. It's a lot more volatile company as you can see here. Now, which one of these companies do you think would be easier to run the optional strategy in? Now, I agree you can run it on either one, but personally, I like to run a more stable company like Kroger. I'm not knocking Tesla. I own one. But when it comes to trading the optional strategy, I would generally tend to lean more towards trading it in Kroger as compared to trading it in Tesla. And the reason is that it's less volatile or it's more predictable. Here you see another example of a mature company that I've been trading in recently, the Brinks company, ticker symbol BCO. It was one of the companies I believe was fundamentally undervalued over the past couple of years, so we've been trading in it. I've been buying some in my outright stock ownership account. Notice that although it has had quite a bit of movement, overall, it's a fairly organized move. It tends to look consistent from a technical aspect. It has nice uniform waves. The stock goes up, comes down, goes up, comes down, and follows generally accepted rules of technical analysis. Those are the types of companies that I like to trade the option wheel strategy in. One of the questions I get asked about the optional strategy is, well, Randy, what do you do if the market crashes? Well, that's one of the nice things about the optional strategy. If you're going to trade it, only trading companies that you'd feel comfortable owning at the strike prices you're selling your cash care put options at. With that, you don't want to be over leveraged. If you're approved for margin, be careful how much margin you use because during the next market crash, if you sold a lot more put options than cash you have available to buy those stocks at, then it could create a situation where you get a margin call. For example, if I'm selling one cash care put option against KR with the August 16th expiration date at the $50 strike price, I know I need to have $50 times 100 shares or $5,000 cash available if the stock were assigned to me. If I didn't have that, then I can be at risk if the stock were to decline, the market would experience a sharp decline, especially if I sold a bunch of cash care put options. So be very careful if you're using margin or leverage when you're selling cash care put options. It can be great when the market goes your way, but when it has that inevitable crash, it can really hurt and it can actually wipe your account out. So just know what you have at risk before you place any option trade. There's a lot of discussion about what strike price you should sell or what expiration date you should use. And that's really a personal preference. Personally, I prefer to sell options that are between 20 and 60 days to expiration. There are some exceptions, but as a general rule of thumb, that's the time frame I'm looking to sell my cash care put options at. And there's not really a certain delta I sell them at. It's more based on that support and resistance as you saw with KR. And just a note about delta. Some people like to sell their cash care put options at a certain delta. Now keep in mind what delta means. Delta is an estimation of the probability that the stock price will be at or below that strike price at expiration. What it is not is the estimation of the percentage chance that it will touch that at any time during your trade. So all of my brokers saying that there's a 35.8% chance 
that this $50 strike price cash care put option with KR will be in the money at expiration. The actual odds that it will touch that $50 between now and expiration could be a lot higher. Also keep in mind with Delta that it does change as the stock goes up and down. So it's definitely not a set percentage that never changes. Before I conclude this video on trading the optional strategy, I want to share with you what a long-term position might look like in one of my favorite stocks I've traded the optional strategy in. That's Realty Income, ticker symbol O. Here you see the trades I've done in Realty Income over almost the past four years. I've color-coded this Excel spreadsheet for you. The green area is the time whenever Realty Income was looking fairly bullish. And the red shaded area is during a time more recently when Realty Income was looking bearish. So help you see how the optional strategies perform during a bearish and a bullish market. What's nice about this example is that Realty Income was in a bullish market for about 678 days. And then it was in a bearish market for about 612 days. So we're looking at a fairly similar time frame for the bullish and the bearish markets. And our position sizing was fairly consistent throughout this entire process. It was a little bit smaller. We we're selling put options back up in here during the bullish cycle. And as time has gone by, we're selling one more contract. But overall, we're looking at fairly similar position sizing. Notice that during the first couple of years, when Real Dink was in a bullish cycle, we put a net cash flow into our pocket of over $7,400. And that's for just this one position. Remember, my position sizing allows me to have at most 5% of my overall portfolio in any one position. So what's happened once it switched over to a bearish market? Well, now we scroll down to the bottom. We see that although we have increased overall cash flow, it wasn't nearly as good as it was back in a bullish market. Market. Notice our cash flow went from 7,400 to 9,900. So over the past year and a half or so, we put a net in our pocket of right at $2,500. This helps you see how the optional strategy works in both a bearish and a bullish time frame. Just for reference, this is what the stock chart looks like during that time frame. Notice back several years ago, it was finding support around $57 per share. It then advanced around 30% up to $75 per share. From that point, it then proceeded to decline and reached a low of around $45 per share when it was down around 40%. Since that low, it's rebounded and is now trading up about 17%. And it's around $52.5 per share. So overall, we see a nice stable company, but it too has experienced some volatility. But you see how this optional strategy is performed in both a bullish market and a bearish market with this individual stock. So a couple of tips here that are very important to you. The optional strategy is a great strategy to consistently generate cash flow returns in stable, mature, consistently profitable companies. Just make sure when you're trading the optional strategy that you remember the three important criteria I mentioned in this video. Consider using vertical diversification when you sell your cash care put options. Only trade the optional strategy and proven companies that have a long track record of being profitable and growing their earnings. And third, make sure the technical factors are in your favor. If you don't understand technical analysis, spend a little time learning it. It'll definitely help improve your cash flow and returns when it comes to trading options. If you'd like to get an alert whenever I buy stock or sell options, check out the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. Finding the perfect optional stocks is the first step in being a successful option wheel trader. If you'd like to see some of the tips and tricks that I use to find my perfect optional stocks, check out the video at the link above in the description below entitled The Perfect Option Wheel Stocks, How to Find Them. Until next time, Happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.